Today we're going to show you how to fix color and exposure in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Today we're going to show you how to fix the color and your exposure of images using Photoshop. More specifically, we're going to go into the Adobe Camera Raw Filter, which is basically a raw editor, but you can also use this on JPEGs. It's super powerful and today we're going to show you how to use it. So here's our sample image. You can download this, by the way, so you can follow along. Just click on the link right down below. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we see we have a regular background layer. I want to make this a smart object. That way I can change and update my filters at any time. So here's what we're going to do. We can go to filter and then convert for smart filters. That makes it a smart object. So let's go ahead and click there. You can see we now have a smart object with our smart object icon. Perfect. So now we're ready to go to our filter menu and we're going to go right down to where it says camera raw filter. This is so powerful. Camera raw filter. I absolutely love this. Let's go ahead. We can just zoom in a little bit to our subjects. Now you can see they look really good in terms of our exposure, but if I zoom back out, you can see we just have like a very cool color here. And that's because the flash that was used was probably set to daylight balance at like 5,600 degrees Kelvin. And honestly, this would look better if it was a little bit warmer. Now I'm also not seeing a ton of detail in the mountains behind our subject or in the sky. So we're gonna create a couple of different selections and then actually fix all these different parts of the image. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go all the way over here to our masking. Now we have this brand new landscape feature. So I'm gonna click on there and see what this will identify. In this case, we have our sky, we have our mountains right underneath it. We even have the water and we have the natural ground. In this case, I'm gonna say the sky and the mountains. I wanna go ahead and select both of those. We're gonna say create two separate masks and then go ahead and click on create. So our sky, let's go ahead and start focusing on this. I wanna just brighten this up a little bit add a little bit more contrast and some clarity. It's gonna make it so beautiful. So for the sky, we're just gonna scroll right on down here and we can see while we see our light, I can adjust my exposure and just bring that up just a little bit more. We're gonna bring up our contrast and then something that I really like to do here, let's bring up our highlights as well. I love going all the way down to my effects tab and adding clarity into skies. You can see, boom, look at that. It makes it just look so much more interesting. Now we can also go in here for our color and bring up our color temperature just a little bit to make it a little bit warmer. All right, let's go ahead and turn that off and on and already you can see huge difference there. Now for our mountains, basically what I wanna do here is take my exposure. We're just gonna bring this up just a little bit so I can see some detail back there because they were kind of hidden. I don't need to make them super bright, but I, I do wanna see some detail. I'm gonna go ahead to my color temperature and we're gonna make this warmer as well. And that's just gonna kind of give it a little bit of a you know, kind of a warmish color against that cool sky. Already we're looking good. Let's see this before and after. We're gonna to go to our zoom level right over here, 50% zoom, and you'll be able to see just the mountains in the sky. Let's just turn those back off and on. You can see already we have a big difference. Okay, so now we're gonna focus here on our subjects and the lighting that's on our subjects was done with a flash. It's beautiful, it's well done. I just want it to be warmer in color. So we're gonna create a radial gradient and make that warmer. So let's go over here to our, we're still in our masks. We're gonna to go to create a new mask here. We're gonna to go to a radial gradient and I'm gonna click and drag out just like that. Let's make sure we hit show overlay and then I can go with my feathering and decide how much or how little feathering that I'd like. Now at any time, if I want to, I can hit V on my keyboard. That's the same thing as going to this dot and then show pins and tools. So this will allow me to actually move this around if I want to. There we go. Let's go ahead and move it just like that. And then I can adjust my feathering there too. That's looking really good. So let's go ahead and hit show overlay. We're gonna turn that off and I'm gonna hit V. Okay, and that's going to show or hide my pins and tools. Fantastic. So now we're gonna go right over here to our color temperature. We mentioned it was a little bit cool of a color temperature, but generally at night you have a little bit of a warmer temperature. So here we're gonna just add some warmer temperature and you're gonna see already how much better this looks. Anytime I add some yellow, I make sure to add a little bit of magenta too, and that's gonna really help that look a lot more natural. So let's just turn this mask off and on and see what a big difference that makes. In the overall image, let's zoom into 50%. And then even in our subject's skin tone, because before, look how cool the color was. And here in the after, it's just a nice warm color. It's more representative of how they would actually look. And of course, we 
color the beach and the sand here as well. Now here with our feathering, we can just decide how much or how little feathering we wanna put on there. And I think right over there looks great. So let's go ahead back to our fit view and we're looking really, really good. So if I go to where it says create new mask and then we have a reset and then I can just toggle the visibility of all of my masks off and on. So there's our before and our after already. Big, big difference. Now the last thing I wanna do is create a little bit of a vignette. I wanna make the ground a little bit darker, maybe the sky a little bit darker on the top and our subjects a little bit brighter. That's gonna help the viewer focus in on the subjects because you can see the ground here very, very bright, okay? The sky bright up here, our subjects are bright, but if I can kind of make the ground just in the bottom a little bit darker and the top a little bit darker, it's gonna help us look at our subjects a little bit more. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new mask and in this case, we're gonna use a linear gradient. We're gonna click and drag from the bottom up just like that and then here in our light section, I'm gonna take my exposure and we're just gonna drag that down a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy with this, okay? We're gonna bring our contrast down a little bit and then I'm gonna take my saturation and bring this down a little bit as well. That's just gonna help us not look at this area so much, okay? So don't forget, you can hit V to hide or show your pins and tools and then kind of decide how you wanna fade this in. There we go, that looks really good. And then you can always click on show overlay to show where it's actually affecting. So let's just turn that off and on and you can see it makes a big difference, right? So before it looked great, but like the brightest part of my image was way down here. Like if I just turn this mask off, oops, sorry, wrong one. If I turn this mask off, you can see all the way on the bottom, that's the brightest part of my image. That's where my eyes are gonna go. But now I just made it a little bit darker, okay? Not unrealistic, but now my eyes are kind of focusing on my subjects. Let's do the same here in the top corner. So we're gonna create a new mask. Again, same exact before, linear gradient. We're gonna come from the top down. I'm gonna do this at an angle, and then I'm just gonna bring our exposure down just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna hit V for my pins and tools. There we go, and I can kind of just make that really nice and natural. Okay, fantastic, turning that off and on. Really looking good. And now we just wanna add a little bit of a bright area for our subject. So we're gonna create a new mask. We're gonna go to a radial gradient, and we're gonna click and drag out here. There we go, let's click on show overlay. And here in my light section, I'm just gonna bring our exposure up just a little bit, nothing too crazy. And we're gonna bring our shadows up just a little bit there as well. Fantastic, let's tone that down just a little bit. And then here where we have our radial gradient, always make sure to adjust your feathering, okay? Let's turn show overlay off. Always adjust your feathering, it makes a really big difference. Let me just go ahead and bring our exposure up a little bit more temporarily so you can see how big of a difference feathering makes. So there we go, feathering this image in, and the more I feather it in, the more natural effect we have. Fantastic, so we can bring our exposure down just a little bit, and there we go. We're gonna click on this icon to see there's our before and the after. What a big improvement we made overall with this photograph. We're looking more at our subjects, they have a warm color, their skin tones look a lot better, I have more detail in the mountains. I have more detail in the sky. There we go. And I'm not focused so much here on the ground in the very front of the image. Now we're gonna hit okay. And then look at that, boom. It automatically updates to my image. I'm back in Photoshop. I can do anything that I would like advanced in Photoshop. But because remember when we first started this tutorial, we made this a smart object. We did that by going to filter and then down to convert for smart filters, remember, okay? So it's a smart object, which means I can literally turn this off and on at any time, these effects that I made, or I can double click right here where it says camera raw filter, and I'm back in camera raw, I can go to my masking, and then look at this, all of my masks are still enabled. And I can go to any one of these and then use this amount slider here. So I can say more or less visible on any one of these different masks that I made. I can make them brighter, I can make them darker, I can go in and really fine tune any of my adjustments that I made so I can get exactly the type of image that I want. Here we go, look how beautiful all this looks. And then with all that refinement, hit okay. And then we're back in Photoshop for our final image. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. Thanks so much for watching today's video. You can download this sample image and PSD totally free. Just follow the link right down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up and let me know in a comment right down below what you would like to learn next. And if you wanna get even more advanced 
Photoshop knowledge, check out Flurn Pro. We have over 10 years of amazing tutorials available for you and an exclusive discount, all of it right down below. Thanks so much. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.